Hello, I'm John Grom, and welcome to our 134th Right and Left Discussion Forum. We hold our televised discussions twice monthly to demonstrate the value of civil, productive, open-minded political dialogue. Today, our panel will discuss this Tuesday's midterm elections. This year's midterm elections have been referred to by some as the most important elections in recent years. Our panel will discuss why they were important, what drove the serious part partisanship on both sides, and what the results will mean for the future of our country. Today's panel, beginning on my left, is Patty Haskins, member of the Wadsworth City Council. On her left is Jerry Ritzman, co-founder of Ritzman Pharmacies. On his left is Dr. Ronald Chamberlain, retired senior research chemist, and on his left is Brian Lawbaugh, president of R&B Financial Services. Patty, I know that you carefully watched Tuesday's election results coming in. What were yes. your feelings as the votes were coming in and you found out that the Democrats were going to win the House? You know, it, it was interesting. I, I got up the next morning and was listening to both stations, you know, Republican and Democrat, and everybody. You mean Fox and CNN? Fox and MSNBC. Oh. And NBC. So you went all the way to I the went left. all the way. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. But both sides were declaring their wins. Um, it, I, having worked at the polls all day on Tuesday, I can tell you that the interest, obviously, in the election was really high. We at the polling place where I was mm -hmm. located, we actually had more voters than we had at the presidential election. Really. So turnout was really high. I think in the county, the turnout was 60 percent, which is even above the state. Yeah the state norm. Uh, one of my big takeaways uh, from this election is that I think it was a win for diversity. We had 110 women that were voted into the, to the House and into the Senate. Um, there were a lot of firsts in those votes. There were the first two Latino women from Texas that were voted into Congress. Uh, the first two female uh, Muslims were, locate, were voted into uh, the House. Uh, the first two Native Americans were voted in. A um, number of firsts. There were also some oddities that uh, occurred in there. There was a uh, gentleman in Nevada. Um, he is a brothel owner and he's dead and he won his <laughs> election, um, which they couldn't get his name off the ballot at the time. So. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I almost can't help Chicago. myself from making <laughs> jokes about that one. Yeah, that uh, that was he owned know, a brothel. That, that was his <laughs> occupation. You know? Yes, I mean that was extremely interesting. And if you can't beat a dead brothel a owner, dead I, I guess <laughs> yes. I mean, you know, what are you going to do there? You know, we also had uh, two uh, members of the House that were voted in that are under indictment, Duncan Hunter in California and Collins, I believe he's from New York, both under indictment, but they were voted in. Uh, you had Menendez, who had just gone through a very, the Democrat on this side of the point, had very interesting trial. I believe it ended in a mistrial. Yeah, it did. So he's not under indictment anymore, but did he, he- Did he win? He won. He won. Oh, yes, yes, quite, quite well, handily. New Jersey and he's a Democrat. That's a yeah. no-brainer. They had and to I, choke it down. <laughs> I read that and I think that's what happened possibly with the yeah. two Republican men that are, un that are indicted, that are under, uh, that, are, that were elected in. I think in Ohio, it definitely proved that it is a red state, uh, judging by all of the, uh, the state offices that were taken by Republicans and in the county, obviously. A couple of exceptions that kind of surprised me. There were two uh, Supreme Court justices who are Democrats right. that were voted in, which is unusual um, in this state. And of course, Sherrod Brown, of course, beat Jim, Jim Renacci. That was the one exception, I think, to the rule in Ohio. You saw cases where states that were strongly in favor of Trump um, in the presidential election, uh, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, that went blue. Mm -hmm. um, this time, so you're seeing some changes. So where all that's this concerned. means diversity to you. A, a lot of it means diversity. I think it also means, um, in in some ways, you know, people are looking at uh, looking at President Trump with more of a critical eye, possibly because he had supported those a lot of these candidates who lost. Now, a lot that he he uh, supported did win. Yeah. Uh, however, those that he was strongly you know, stumping for and campaigning for were in states that he had won by a huge amount, so it was not a surprise 
that they won. I, I think in the future, though, what this will show is that is that we will now have checks and balances. Democrats will have checks and balances on the president by controlling the House. And you know how that turns out will be quite interesting. Uh, if you listen to the press conference that the president had yesterday, um, he said it would be good for him politically to have the checks and balances. But then <coughs> if you listen to the whole thing, he went on by saying, that if they try to do this or this or this, I'm going after them. I'm not going to sit back. So, you know, this is kind of the way things operate. But I, I think it could be, um, it hopefully uh, could maybe make a more civil, not necessarily civil, but a more reasonable uh, government that we have. I think it's always good to have checks and balances on the president, no matter what party they are in. <coughs> Uh, because it forces people to compromise. But sometimes it can be a little overwhelming. I thought that the uh, the Republican attitude toward uh, the Affordable Care Act was out of line. Mm -hmm. it was a, I would agree. A, 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 just a, a total, it, it, and it didn't matter. It, it's, well, healthcare. the Republicans were doing to Obama pretty much what the Democrats, I, I'm sure, will be doing to uh, uh, Trump. Anything he wants is out. You know, and that's, uh, I think that the, uh, the, the House under, uh, what was his name, the, the, the um, John Boehner. Boehner, under Boehner was, uh, it, it was embarrassing as a Republican to, yeah. to see the absolute no to everything. Yeah, and you don't want to yeah. see that continue. No, no You really don't. don't. You do no. want them to work on things, but maybe they can actually work on infrastructure. They can uh -huh. come to some kind of agreement on immigration. <laughs> yeah. I would like to see that. I am hopeful. Um, I'll kind of cross my fingers and hold my breath and see what happens in the future. Yeah. What do you think, Jer? Well, I was uh, interested uh, mostly in uh, voter participation and started looking at some uh, figures from the uh, Ohio Secretary of State. Mm -hmm. And uh, Patty, you mentioned Medina County had close to 60% of registered voters voted. Which is mm -hmm. high. Uh, which is high in the state. I mean, the top counties in, in Ohio were like uh, Union, Delaware, Geauga, Ottawa, and Warren County. Those are the only ones over 60% of registered voters voted. Summit was 57% of registered voters voted, according to figures from the Secretary of State of Ohio. Medina, 59%, <laughs> Cuyahoga, 53 and Wayne, 53 yeah. Uh, I read the 60 and what, the What is today. normal for a midterm? Well, it's been about 30%. Yeah. Is it, that right? Low. And the thing is, is that, so I looked, and so I'm looking, and I said, the Secretary of State said there were 8,070,000 registered voters in Ohio. Well, when I looked at the population of Ohio and how many people are over 18, that's about everybody over 18 registered. Hmm. That can't be. Mm -hmm. Somebody's figures are not correct. Uh, and I thought, well, how can that be? Uh, the Ohio population estimates are like 11.5 million. Under 18 is 2.7 million. So that leaves 8 million over 18. And we've got about that very same number from the Secretary of State that are registered. I don't know what's going on there. I that, think the state average was. 57%. Yeah, the state average was 50% of registered voters. But I don't know where the Secretary of State's mm -hmm. getting these figures because we can't, if we think <coughs> close to 100% of eligible voters are registered, I, I, that, I find that hard to believe. I don't but even I want to think the, about the shenanigans that go on in putting this data together. Yeah, I, well, I, I don't know. And, and so anyway, but you know, Summit County, <clears throat> I used some other figures, Summit County has, uh, 87% of eligible <laughs> voters, of people eligible to vote, are registered. 87% of them. And 51% uh, of those voted. 50 per, 50, about 50% 50 of people eligible to vote, not registered, voted. So hmm. half or less than half of the eligible hmm. voting population is determining <coughs> what we do. And hmm. of course, 50% of 50% is 25% of 
of the eligible voting population is, is giving us a direction. That's a concern to me. Uh, now, just a couple things unrelated to, or somewhat related to that. Uh, we <laughs> asked what drove the partisanship or drove the vote. I think fear. In fear? a lot of cases, yeah. there was people were voting their fears, which Instead is instead of gratitude is is this concern to me yeah. when when we're afraid. but that's what gets people out. Yes, and that's yes. what political ads. What do you think they're afraid of? I think they're afraid of immigration. The uh, invasion. They're afraid of invasion by. We're being invaded by these people from. Guatemala. Yeah, all those mothers and babies. Ooh, I, I know. I mean, th this is crazy. Almost a thousand miles away this from is, the border. This, this is crazy. <laughs> and and uh, anyway, uh, I, and Patty, uh, you mentioned that there are two Democrat judges in the Ohio Supreme Court. I think that's a good thing because everybody accuses the Ohio Supreme Court of being packed with people who affiliate with one party. Of course, it's a nonpartisan ballot. Yeah. But, but. Uh, <laughs> these folks. Uh, and the other thing that I'd like to ask you folks is what do you think of issue one, the defeat of issue one? It didn't surprise me at all. I thought for sure well, what, it would be defeated. I was against issue one, not that it didn't have some very good intentions, but I have never known a law that did not have unintended consequences. Right. And when you put it in as a constitutional amendment, you're hamstrung and getting it changed yeah. when it needs to be changed. To so me, that for that reason, I was against with it. it. Yes. Yeah. I, <clears throat> I, I, th those things that should be legislated have no place in the Constitution. Yeah. Uh, I, that's that's what that I was thought. my main thing. <coughs> then, yeah. Even if, even as a law, it would take away so much discretion from would a judge. Would you like to explain issue one? Issue one. It limited uh, what a judge could do for somebody. Uh, guilty of a, partic a particular drug of, of uh, offenses, mm -hmm. uh, violating drug laws. It prevented it prosecutors yeah. from yeah. overcharging. Yeah. So I a see. common pra practice, and this was one of the biggest reasons for it, I think, a common practice is to charge the drug abuser or user with a higher charge and then have that leverage then to um, yeah. okay. bargain them down. Unfortunately, that means that the users were being put into prison at a high rate. Without a trial. Right. And without treatment, and it, it focused on the treatment angle for a disease, which is drug abuse, um, for a disease as opposed to prison mm. time. Mm. But again, there were all kinds of flaws within the... Yeah, the and, and, and a speculation that they'd save enough money by uh, getting people out of prison, they could build the rehab, rehab facilities. And, and that was really a questionable. Yeah, well, was that was questionable because there were all kinds of yeah. different figures on the money. So maybe it'll be a push for the legislature to actually do something now. Well, so. I, th I think it, it gives the legislature a dodge to their responsibilities. And they should do something. We do that. Yeah. And, right. and um, you know, by making it a constitution. Yeah, amendment. right. By leaving yeah. it up to the voters. Th mm -hmm. They're avoiding their responsibility. Yeah. And they need to stand Good up and, and take, uh, yes, they need to stand <laughs> up and meet their responsibilities, I think. So, but it's no place for the Constitution for anything like that. I don't believe. I I'd like to go back and visit that yeah. in, in, in about five minutes. Yep. <laughs> Good luck I'm with that. I'm done. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I had a number of thoughts here. I'm encouraged, as Patty is, by the diversity shown and the fact that the House is now going to be able to provide the checks and balances that it needs to do. I'm pessimistic that it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I'm worried that the, the Democratic House is going to be just as recalcitrant as the Republican House was at getting anything mm -hmm. done, and I, I'm afraid that even on infrastructure, there's going to have to be compromises, and Congress has not been very good at that in recent no. years. Uh, so uh, that, that's, that's a worry to me. The second, another thing is that gerrymandering is alive and well. Look at, look at our, our congressional district. Uh, most, of the, most of the contests were like two to one in favor of Republican, or something like that. Yes. And uh, <clears throat> that really shouldn't be. I think we're more diverse population. We should be a more diverse population of that if we spread out a little bit. I'm wondering if now that we have uh, 
a republic still have a Republican Senate and a Republican governor if we're going to continue through with the redistricting uh, proposals and, and, and things that will happen before 2020. Uh, the, the legislature has, has dragged their feet so far on that. And uh, the proposal is to use the same thing that they've done on doing the state redistricting, which is, you know, yeah. a bipartisan committee, all that, all that structure. And uh, I don't know that that's going to happen, so I'm a little bit pessimistic there. Uh, this is one election uh, that I was very tempted to go straight ticket on. I'd never do that. And I didn't this time either, but uh, it was tough not to, considering that uh, my view of what the Republicans in Congress have been doing for the last four years or so, and uh, with Mr. Trump in particular, uh, it definitely was a referendum on Mr. Trump, I think. And I think we've seen that in the, the states which, uh, which went blue, like Wisconsin, for example. There's been a lot yeah. of controversy about Scott Walker. and. Uh, <clears throat> He's been a very stubborn individual and survived a lot of problems, but uh, we got him this time. <laughs> so, uh, so things like that have happened, and, and uh, that's encouraging to me that we'll be able to take that. Uh, Mr. Trump, uh, some of, one of you mentioned it at his news conference. He said, yeah, gee, congratulations to all them. I'll have these checks and balances. We need to get good politics, get good government here. And, but boy, I'm not going to I'm not going to." Uh, uh, work with you on on infrastructure or anything else if you attack me and try to subpoena me and and I'll have that power to do that so i'm I'm curious to see what will happen and I'm not terribly optimistic about it uh, Brian, I have a big question for you being a financial guy. How do you feel about the possibility of Maxine Waters heading up the financial services uh, committee uh, well that's just a train wreck waiting to happen um, you know, I think there was enough um, good news in this election for everybody. Everybody mm -hmm. could walk away feeling like mm -hmm. they won something. Um, you know, the, uh, uh, the Democrats won in areas that they should have won in. It wasn't a surprise. Wisconsin wasn't a surprise. You know, Scott Walker has been uh, sort of the lone man in the wilderness up there in Wisconsin for a long time. Uh, it wasn't surprising that, you know, he lost his race. and, and you know, the folks up there, I, I really have a tendency to <clears throat> shy away from, you know, the notion that, uh, you know, this was some sort of a referendum on Donald Trump because those people that he went out and supported, uh, they won. Uh, Except for Jim Renacci. Yeah, that's too bad know. about Jim. You know, he's, he was <laughs> outspent, what, what, two or three to one. Um, and uh, the National Party never really got behind him. Um, <clears throat> you know, they made that decision that they were going to focus on other areas in Ohio <coughs> wasn't one of those areas that they're going to focus on. Um, so I think uh, if, if you look at the markets, the markets like what happened because uh, it points to gridlock. Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to have uh, at least <coughs> two years of uh, what, uh, what Mr. Obama had uh, when the uh, Senate was Democrat and, and he sat in office and the House was Republican. There wasn't much that got done, and the markets like that because they want them. They want the government out of, you know, out of their business, and uh, they can argue and wrangle and have as many uh, investigations as they want. But at the end of the day, nothing gets done, and uh, you know, businesses like that, uh, they like to be left alone. And uh, we saw yesterday the market was up over 500 points, and so um, I think there needs to be a softening. Uh, of tone uh, on both sides. Uh, you know, Donald Trump is not the type of guy you want to engage in. Um, he's a fighter, and <coughs> people aren't used to that. Uh, I watched part of the news conference yesterday. There was a, you know, it's kind of interesting. He's one of the only guys that's ever been uh, willing to have a press conference like that and to take on all comers. <laughs> you know, you might not like what he said. You might not no. like how he acts, no. but you know when he he opened it up, you know, mm. and, uh, and and he took all questions. And uh, I was you know, an interview with Kellyanne Conway. She said made the same point. Mm -hmm. Says he's out there. He's he's willing to yeah. talk, to take the yeah. Talk, 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 yeah. So he's willing to take it on the chin. I, I might not agree with him. I, I, now, I, that's I'm such not a gonna, low bar, though. You know, I mean, he's willing to take the questions. Yeah, so yeah. But the fact of the matter is, it was so it was it. so controlled. I mean, the, the media, we can, we can talk about the media and how they handled the Obama administration for eight years. You know, they basically genuflected 
uh, at everything he said or did, and there was never a hardball question. Uh, so I, I think when you look at what usually happens in a midterm, uh, you could say that the Republicans came out pretty well because yeah. uh, I think Obama lost how many seats in his midterm? 60, over 60. Yeah. Bill Clinton lost over 100. Uh, and Donald Trump saying, you know what, you know, we, we turned over 30 some seats. I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that as a win, and we and we kept the Senate, mm -hmm. uh, and we've added to you know the mm -hmm. Senate. So Is it I two think two or three that they added. Um, I, they, I think at least three. Maybe there might even be two more I, well, uh, no, that, I, that they haven't called. They haven't uh, called yet. Well, yeah. I think um, it would go the other way, because te Tester ended up winning yeah. as it turned out. Yeah, but which, but still, it's going to be a, a Republican. Senate. Oh, it's going to be sure. a Republican you Senate. Know, it's going to be a Republican Senate. So you know, there was enough there to each side could walk away. I really hope. I really hope that. Uh, they don't view this, and you know, some articles are saying that this is just exactly what Donald Trump wants for the next two years, because he's going to beat him over the head with it, um, and he'll have enough fodder to you know get reelected, and that's something that I really don't. So he started remember. his campaign. Well, sure oh, he yeah, has. He, he started a year ago, and, and he's out there. He's got it <coughs> down. Uh, he's so, like Obama. He's never quit. No, he's well, never exactly. Quit. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So. You know, I was interested. The one that really shocked me was in Florida. Not any of the candidates, but that issue that allows um, felons to mm -hmm. go back and vote, mm -hmm. which is, you know, uh, one and a half million felons, because in the way the system was set up and with the governor as just never granted them yeah. the vote. And I was surprised because the state went so Republican in their elections, but then they turned around and passed that by a large margin, mm -hmm. and that was shocking to that, me. That is giving somebody who has already paid their debt to society right, right. The, the right to the vote, right, the yeah. right to sure. to rejoin. Exactly. Yeah. Well, well, as a Republican, that would have my vote too. Sure, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. So, yeah. but it was, and part of the reason <clears throat> it went on the ballot was because of the way the governor had been handling it. Mm -hmm. At present, they had to go before a board at that time and be granted the right to vote. And he just routinely, everyone yeah. was denied. Yeah. Yeah. So. One of the concerns that I hear mentioned from time to time is the fact that there are actually two Republican parties. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. And that uh, Trump's um, propensity to negotiate um, might not go down too well uh, with the extreme right wing part of the uh, Republican Party. And there may be yeah. some kind of a significant split. And uh, the moderates yeah. Republicans were the ones that lost. Yes. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. the mm -hmm. hard right, right are the ones that are still there. Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, and I think you see it with the Democrats as well, because they've taken such a hard turn to the left with uh, Bernie and, and you know trying to court him. I keep, I keep forgetting um, her name from Queens. Andrew, yeah. um, Cortez. Uh, Ocasio. Or, I, I'm okay. sorry, I don't want to. You know, I think everybody knows who we're talking about. Yes. But there were several others. But she won. You know, she won. Oh, well, yeah, they knew she was, she was going to win. She was going to win. It was know, a very yeah. democratic yeah, district. It, yeah, yeah. There was yeah. no question there. But I, I think <clears throat> what's happened, and and it's a danger for both parties. When you go so far to the left or so far to the right, you leave a lot of people. And right. I think the Democrats mm. are going to struggle, and the Republicans are going to struggle, because they've taken such a hard turn that they, you know. The Democratic Party of my dad or my grandfather, it's not socialism. Mm -hmm. It's not beating up on the military. No. It's not uh, uh, want to uh, disband ICE and go after the police. Correct. You know? And I think that hurts people. And, and on, the, on the very right, you know, when you start courting uh, those fringe groups, you know, you're going you're gonna to really have problems. Uh, I really believe that. I think we need to start to come together. And uh, if, if Nancy Pelosi decides that she wants to, you know, throw out an olive branch to Mr. Trump and Mr. Trump is willing to do the same and come together and get something done. Uh, I think that's what I heard. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the things that the uh, conservative wing of the Republican Party would uh, yeah. find very upsetting for him to join forces with mm -hmm. Nancy Pelosi on yeah. anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, she is a real pariah. For, for, well, he always for says that at his rally yeah, so much. Yeah, sure. He, he did. One of the things that uh, I'd like to visit here in the next couple of minutes is what's happened to the United States Congress. And uh, the best example I can think of is they're absolutely immobilized on the idea of uh, immigration reform. 
they just can't face it because they're so locked into uh, uh, what the next election is going to bring that they, 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 they can't find enough people to vote on anything. This has been going on now for decades mm -hmm. uh, that they just, uh, and it's a, it's a very, very scary thing uh, when you think that the legislative body of this, this great country is immobilized. Mm -hmm. And what happens then is that uh, since they don't do anything about that or any other items, the, 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 the policy is made in the courts. Yes, well, the, we, and and it leaves the courts up to do the legislature, which is why they did which not is, like Kavanaugh. Yeah, <laughs> but it's. Mm -hmm. I don't it, know how you fix that. Um, when I think back, when I was a kid, and there was fifteen minutes of network news on three different channels uh, in the evening. Uh, there was Walter Cronkite and John Swayze. Yeah, John Swayze. John, John Cameron Swayze. Swayze. John Cameron Swayze, yeah. and uh, Douglas Edwards. And they were on for 15 minutes. Compare that to wall to wall on what yeah. five different uh, <coughs> networks yeah. now. You, you uh, if you're a congressman, you can't hide. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you can't vote your conscience because somebody will be out there to beat you up over it. I think one of the issues is is once again, you know, they're courting the extreme. Mm -hmm. So one extreme wants to build a wall. The other extreme says, hey, let them in. You know, there, there is no process. Uh, if they're here, they're here. So we <laughs> have to be able to get some congressmen to say, listen, we, we can't go there with letting them in. I believe that a country without borders is not really a country. And I go back to what I've said time and time again here. You go to any other country, they have immigration. They have a process. They have some citizens that are there that don't that, that don't get to vote. Is that true in Europe in recent times? Oh yeah, it is. Sure, it is. Because Germany, you don't see the problem is you don't hear about the cases where Germany rounds up people and says, "Hey, listen, you're out of here." No, because, you don't. Because you didn't go through the process. Those people are there. They know that they're there, and they have a process that they're working through. So you know, we we got to pull back this notion about the wall, and we got to pull back this notion that well, we just you know we just open it up. Yeah. Um, and there has to be, I like what Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton and most of the Democrats said uh, 15, 18 years ago, and, yeah. and Feinstein and, and Pelosi. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, let's run the process. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. well, thank you very much. We've run out of time. Oh. Yeah. <laughs>